This video reviews the adjustments that you can make to the scales in your Medmont Studio software. Altering the scale allows you to change the analysis on each individual uh, topography. In this case, we have selected a normalized power scale on this axial power map. And what that shows us is in normalized power, we start with the flattest the topographer can read at the bottom of the scale, 32.67 diopters, all the way up to the steepest the topographer can read at 44.03 diopters. Meaning that we're displaying the full range of curvature across this particular eye. And that gives us a lot of detail from center to periphery. One drawback of this scale is it doesn't immediately tell you whether this eye falls within a normal range. Is it steeper? Is it flatter than normal? The benefit of the normalized scale is the detail that you see when you select each topography because the scale is normalized for each individual eye. It's specific for each topography that you've selected. Now you have other options. You could select a K scale, which goes from a range of nine diopters to a hundred diopters on every topography. Same thing with the standard power it goes from 35 to 50 diopters, so it's a set scale. The universal from 30 diopters to 67 and a half diopters. The benefit of these absolute scales, the K scale, the standard power, and the universal, is that they will show the cornea in green when it falls within a normal range. If this eye were keratoconic, then we would see far more red curvature. If this was a post-LASIK patient, we're far more likely to see blue. So the benefit of the absolute scale is it quickly tells you whether the eye falls within normal, green, abnormally steep, red, or abnormally flat in blue. A recommended way to start is to use the normalized power scale. This will give you the most definition on each individual eye. Another time that we might alter the scale is when we're performing an analysis after orthokeratology or refractive surgery. Here we might select the pre-ortho-K or pre-refractive surgery topography, then the post-wear or post-surgical map. Then we're going to go up to view and compare. And this creates your subtractive map, otherwise known as your comparison map. Now you see the pre, the post, and the difference. But there's not a lot of detail to this topography. And that's because the scale is fairly broad. It goes from plus six to minus six. Yet the change in the center appears to be closer to two diopters. So let's alter the scale to a plus two to minus two scale. Now it's very obvious to see the ideal bullseye topographical response that we had following ortho K. Most of the color contours are falling within the range of the graph down below, telling us that our scale is closer to the full range of curvature created on this eye. Whereas we do notice that there is some areas where we're getting less detail where the data falls beyond the scale. In this case, we might alter from a two diopter to a three diopter scale. And now 100% of the differential is falling within the graph. So this is a manner in which you can get more detail on each individual outcome. For instance, if this were a patient with a six diopter change, we'd want to alter the scale up to show plus six or minus six. If we were showing a four diopter myopic reduction, we'd want to alter the scale for each individual power change that we're creating. We can also create custom scales. So if we preferred to have a 7, 8, and 9 diopter scale, we can create that.
And the same is true for your standard scales, the normalized or the absolute scales. You can create a custom for each one of these scales that we've discussed. For a neophyte, it might be best to analyze most of your eyes in normalized power when you're looking at singular or multiple topographies. Then in your subtracted map, you might default to a two diopter power scale. And this will give you lots of definition um, on each of your axial and tangential topographies that you're analyzing. As you get more and more comfortable with your MedMont Studio software, then learn to adjust these scales and they're going to be valuable for you to create better analysis, more detailed appreciation of each of the eyes and the procedures that you might perform.